Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about my top five men's fragrances from the house of Chanel. So Chanel is, in my opinion, one of the best designer brands. They're almost niche price, but the quality is almost niche as well. The only kind of thing that I can say bad about Chanel is the fact that some of their fragrances are, uh, they, don't, they don't really push the boat out too much. They're quite safe, but they are all unique. So got to give them credit. They are a great house in my opinion. Probably one of the best designer fragrance brands that I know. So just before we get on with the list guys, remember as always, if you are new to the channel, please don't forget to drop a like on this video. Please don't forget to subscribe as well. If you're a fan of fragrances, then please feel free to join the squad. Be more than happy to have you on there. Also, uh, it is the month of November or Movember. So that's what this is. Um, I don't usually have this, but I thought uh, I might as well give it a go. So I will leave a link in the description below to donate to Movember as well. It raises money for men's mental health and a bunch of other things. So please feel free to check that out as well. Okay, so like I said, the house of Chanel, they are all fairly safe. Uh, I can tell a fragrance is safe and it's mass appealing when my girlfriend likes it. And every single one on this top five list, apart from one, uh, my girlfriend absolutely loves. So uh, that's how you can tell that they're good because my girlfriend likes them and she doesn't really like much fragrances. She seems to like the fresh and clean sort of ones, which is what Chanel is really. They are just kind of fresh, mass appealing fragrances that no one can really dislike. That's why I say they're quite safe, but they are all really, really unique. So we're gonna kick things off with the number five spot. This one is uh, a fairly new one on my list, I'll be honest, but it does smell like something I've already got in my collection. So I don't really wear it too much, but when I do wear it, I seem to get good reactions from it and I really enjoy wearing it. And funny enough, I'm actually, uh, I sprayed it on this sweatshirt a couple days ago and I can still smell it and it smells great. And the one that we are talking about is this one here, Chanel Allure Homme Sport. And I think this is just the Eau de Toilette version. This is the non-extreme version. This is just the kind of, as it comes, Chanel Allure Homme Sport. And to me, when I smell it, it's just like a powdery, fresh marine citrus smell. And it, like I said, it reminds me of another fragrance I've got. It reminds me a little bit like this which is Versace Pour Homme. And out of the two, oh, wrong way around, out of the two, I would probably say, in terms of quality, this one is probably a little bit better, but this one performs a tiny bit better and it projects a little bit more. This one's a little bit more subtle, but in my opinion, it's a little bit more powdery and it smells a little bit nicer. There's a really nice tangerine note in here, which I really enjoy. Like I said, this one's probably uh, one of the safest ones that you can wear. It doesn't have the best performance, uh, but this is this would be perfect for like a summer day uh, or all year round, to be honest. It is that versatile, but I can see myself wearing this mainly in the summer. So coming in at the number five spot is Chanel Allure Homme Sport Original. Okay, coming in at the number four spot, sticking with the Allure line, we've got this one here. Chanel Allure Homme Sport O Extreme. So this one is basically the up graded version of Chanel Allure Homme Sport. This one takes in a little bit more of a sweet direction because there is a really nice tonka bean note in here. So tonka bean, if you didn't know, kind of smells like a, like a dry or almost burnt vanilla smell. And they've also got the note of mint in here. So this thing when you smell it is super fresh and it's super fresh, it's super bright and uplifting. And it's been debated in the fragrance community whether or not this is a fall and winter fragrance or a spring and summer fragrance. I'm under the opinion you can wear this all year round. I think at the time of recording this video, this is my third or fourth most complimented fragrance. Projection and longevity on this thing are actually really, really good. For the first two to three hours that you spray this thing on, people can smell you 100%. I know they can smell you. So. Uh, if you are going out, if you just want something safe to wear and just spray on and it works with any outfit, this thing is a great fit for that. It's really good. You can wear it in any occasion. It is Chanel, so it has got that kind of classiness to it. And you can wear it in any season, any occasion. So probably the most versatile one that I own. And I just love it. And I've had this for such a long time. So going in at the number four spot, is Chanel Allure Homme Sport O Extreme. Yeah, man, that mint and tonka bean combo is just amazing. I really, really like this one. Coming in at the number three spot, this one is quite a weird one. And surprisingly, you would think that this would be number two or number one. But for me, it's so strange because sometimes I really, really enjoy wearing it. And it'd be like the only fragrance that I want to wear for like a week straight. It's so strange. But then other times, I just, 
I'm like, oh, okay, it's just it's just that one. I'm not really going to spray it. I'm not really biggest fan of it. So it's it's a really strange one. Uh, it's my girlfriend's favorite fragrance. So if you've been on the channel for a while, you'll know what one I'm talking about. It's this one here, number three spot is Bleu de Chanel, and this is the Eau de Parfum version. You could probably put uh, the Eau de Toilette, you could put the Parfum in here, but for me, in my opinion, the Eau de Parfum is the perfect balance of all of them. Yeah, it, Ambroxan, Grapefruit, Incense, I think is in here. This thing is just so, it almost is just like what the bottle is, like a dark kind of blue, uh, like a navy blue. It's so classy, man. So posh. This is probably one of the most posh fragrances that I own. And see, it's funny, because now I want to wear it more because I've smelled it. But then, like, I'll, I'll forget about it after I spray it a few times and think, oh, it's just Bleu de Chanel. But if you've got this in your collection, give it another, give it a chance, because it is really, really good, actually, to be honest. This thing kind of started the wave of blue fragrances, and it kind of paved the way uh, for all the industry, which is what Chanel does, and it's great to see that. And this one's no different. The Eau de Parfum version is just split right down the middle of freshness and also like a kind of, I don't want to say sweetness, but like a kind of um, incense-y, almost resinous smell what, that the Parfum has. But the notes in here aren't too heavy is, is kind of one of the words I think I'm looking to use. And you can just see how much I've actually used of this bottle. I didn't think I've used a lot of this, but apparently uh, I've gone kind of crazy with the sprays. I've not actually decanted this fragrance either, so... Uh, I've probably taken about 60 mil, and out of 80 fragrances, that's quite a lot. Performance and longevity, again, are really, really good for this. I would probably say, uh, in terms of projection, I get about four to six hours, and then after that, it sort of stays like a skin scent to about this, this range, but people can still smell you. Uh, I've worn this whenever I go out a few times, and I've sprayed it on at like six o'clock in the afternoon, and then at like midnight, people say they can still smell me, so... Coming in at the number three spot is Bleu de Chanel. Okay, coming in at the number two spot. For a while, I had this as my number one Chanel fragrance. And it is quite under the radar if you don't know about it. There was actually quite a lot of hype, I remember a few years ago, from one uh, fragrance creator, I think it was, yeah, from Big Beer Business. And I was a big fan of his channel a few years ago. And I was like, okay, the notes of this thing sound quite good. It's got Sicilian lemon, it's got Madagascan vanilla, and I was like, okay, that sounds quite interesting. I really like the notes of lemon. Lemon's probably one of my favorite fragrance notes outside of fragrances, if that makes any sense. Like shower gel, uh, like beard oil stuff. If it's lemon scented, I'm most likely gonna buy it. I really like the smell of lemon in stuff that isn't fragrances. And I thought, look, I don't actually have a lemon-based fragrance, so let's do it. Let's bite the bullet and let's actually go out and purchase this fragrance. The one that I'm talking about at the number two spot is this one here. So under the radar, I think, in my opinion, from the House of Chanel, and that is Edition Blanche, or Allure Homme Edition Blanche. And there was a funny time in the fragrance community where this was getting told to be discontinued. So I saw it in the airport one day, and I was like, oh my god, that is a really good price. That shouldn't be there. It's been discontinued. But it turns out it hadn't been discontinued. And I'm so glad it's still available. I'm so glad that people can still have the, uh, the option to actually go out and buy this. In my opinion, this is like the kind of perfect uh, end, if you're looking for like the be-all, end-all, for the Allure Home Sport line. This thing, oh, it's so, so sophisticated. This is like if you were to mash these two fragrances together in terms of like when you can wear them and you would just go at like that and put them both together uh, you would get the beautiful kind of like citrusy grapefruit note i know it's lemon but uh, you've got the citruses in here from bleu de chanel and then you've also got the powderiness from a lohom sport o extreme and that's what you get from this it's kind of the mix uh, the best of both worlds really if you want and oh man, i absolutely love this thing usually i'll wear this like a kind of um uh, dressed up event, but I have also worn it quite casually as well with like uh, like yellow like yellow t-shirt, white shorts, uh, just stuff with like bright clothing on. This thing works perfectly for really good performance, really good projection, uh, really good reactions too. And in my opinion, it's uh, probably the best refined version of um, of the modern Chanel fragrances. So coming in at the number two spot is Chanel Alorme Sport Edition Blanche. And just to say, actually, most people refer this thing to like a lemon meringue pie, I totally get that. Uh, you can definitely 
get that from the vanilla and also the lemon here. So yeah, number two spot, so good. And just before we get on with the number one spot, guys, remember, if you are new to the channel, please don't forget to drop a like on this video. Please don't forget to subscribe as well. Like I said, we're growing a great community and we would be more than happy to have you. And I just want to give a quick honorable mention to a few fragrances on here that aren't going to be on the number one spot. One of them is Chanel Ego East. I remember a few years ago, Jeremy was hyping that up a lot and I was like, okay, He's hyping it up a lot. Most of the time, I agree with his fragrance recommendations. I'll go out to like the department store and go and smell it. And I went out and, and sprayed Ego East on one hand, and I think it's called Platinum, Ego East Platinum, on the other hand. And I was like, okay, nice. I'm going to spray it. Let's see my first reactions. And I was like, oh, oh, that's bad. That smells like urine. <laughs> uh, and I was like, okay, surely they've refined it a little bit with, uh, with Platinum. Oh no, it's even worse. Um, but that was a few years ago. And funny enough, the number one spot I had a similar reaction. Bear in mind, this was about six to seven years ago when I tried Ego East, Ego East Platinum and the number one spot. So that's why it's not in this list because I actually haven't gone back and tried Ego East. Maybe it makes the list, but for me personally, at this time, uh, I can't really recommend it to you because uh, I don't have enough experience with that one. But the one that I do have a lot of experience with, one that I've really started to enjoy more and more. And if you watched my uh, ranking every fragrance video, you'll see how high up on the list this came. And there's a good reason for it. There's just something in this fragrance at number one spot that I absolutely love. In my opinion, not only is it the best Chanel designer fragrance, but it's also probably one of the best designer fragrances of all time. Unfortunately, I've got a fairly new batch, so I can't really safe like the vintage version. I think this has been out since the 80s and it's this one here, Chanel Antaeus. So funny enough, whenever you go to like department stores and stuff, especially the one where I live, this, I didn't even know existed for a while. Um, I mistakenly thought that this was the Bleu de Chanel body spray or, or whatever it's called. And I just skipped past it. and I never even knew that this was actually a fragrance. I thought it was a deodorant stick or something. So I never picked it up. And I'm so glad I did because I sprayed this on one of the tester cards and I took it home with me and I had it in my car and I set it on the dashboard and the whole car ride home, I was like, okay, something smells amazing. Like maybe it's my car air freshener. And I, I smelled it. I was like, it's definitely not that. And I was looking around the car. I'm like, what is that? Is it my fragrance that I'm wearing for today? No, it's not that. And then I saw the cards and I'm like, oh, of course. It's, it's Antaeus. This is such a complex fragrance. It's a really nice chiffre. It's got like amazing oak moss in here. It's got castorium, which is uh, the note from uh, a beaver's butt, basically. It sounds really weird. It's also got a really nice freshness to it. So you've got that animalic side to it of the oak moss and the castorium in here, which gives it kind of like a sweaty almost smell. You've also got the really nice freshness to it from the sage, the bergamot, the lime, and the lemon. To me, actually, it gives a kind of almost pine sort of smell. So you've got like the oak moss and then you've got the fresh pine. So it's very, very manly. It's not for everyone, I'll be honest, but oh, it's powdery too. There's just something about this. It's also got like a hint of floral notes in there, which just give it like a like a softness to it. And oh, man, I just absolutely love this thing. It develops perfectly. I love it on skin. I love it on clothes. And in my opinion, this is just like the perfect designer fragrance. So coming in at the number one spot is Chanel's Antaeus. If you can find an older bottle, which has the Eau de Toilette above the Chanel, this one's a fairly new batch, I'll be honest. And they've had to regulate the castorium a lot. So if you can find an older batch, it'll be a lot more musky, uh, but still you can't go wrong with the newer batches. So yeah, number one spot, my favorite Chanel fragrance. Uh, or designer Chanel fragrance is Antaeus. So that is gonna do it for this video, guys. Let me know down below, what are your favorite fragrances from the house of Chanel? Like I said, they're probably one of my favorite designer fragrance brands and uh, potentially they're yours as well. So if you've ever tried anything from Chanel, be interested and see what your thoughts of the brand as a whole are. Let me know down in the comments below. Also guys, remember as always, don't forget to drop a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe. If you guys wanna know how I've managed to afford all of these high-end designer fragrances, and a bunch of niche fragrances. There actually is a way that you can do that without spending any of your own money, essentially. And the way that you do that is by Fragrance Decant. And I talked about it slightly earlier when I said uh, I haven't decanted Bleu de Chanel, like this one here, Amour's Beach Up Man. I've probably only sprayed this about 10 times, but as you can see, there is a massive dent out of this thing. 
and that is helping me offset the cost. So by the time I get to 50 mil of this thing, I would have covered my initial cost for this and I would have had 50 mil remaining and the bottle. So if you guys want to learn how to offset the cost of your fragrances, grow a massive collection without any of your own money, then maybe that course is for you. It's a mini course, it only costs you 10 pounds. You can make that back literally. If you were to sell two mil of Beach Up Man or a five mil, you've already made your money back. You can do this with any fragrance that you've got. For example, like this one here, Versace Pour Homme. This is one that I've been decanting heavily recently. And if you were to decant just two of this, this fragrance cost me like 20 pounds. You can do two five mils and it pays for the course. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, there's a link down in the description below. That is gonna do it for the shameless plugs. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.